There's a story I really like by the guy who does UI for Palm. He does this project where he goes out and he takes groups and he gives them 25 strands of spaghetti and like some masking tape and says, um, build, build the tallest structure that will support an egg. And it's interesting which groups do well and which groups don't. So I mean, group one group that does pretty well that you would kind of expect, engineers. Um, the group, I think a, the highest scoring one, if I recall correctly, was a group of Singaporean engineers. A uh, group that does worst is MBAs. Apparently they spend all of their time arguing about who's going to be in charge of building the spaghetti tower. Um, but one group does surprisingly well, kindergartners. They actually like score pretty high up there. Um, why do they do this? This is kind of surprising. Well, first of all, kindergartners don't know about rules yet, as any of you who have children will recall. Um, they, they are the only people who ask for more spaghetti. There's no rule that says you can't have more, but when we're given 25 strands of spaghetti, we tend to accept 25 strands of spaghetti. Like that must be the, the God ordained number. Um, but what do they do with that spaghetti is actually interesting. They have no plan. They do not sit around in like a focus group and talk about how this is, they just start building. And then they, when they breaks, they go get more spaghetti and they try. And through incremental improvement and trial and error, they actually get something that looks like some sort of like monster out of a really bad B movie, but actually does a really good job of supporting an egg, which is what it's supposed to do. Um, and they have no fear of failure because they're five. No one's watching them. They don't feel like this is going to go on their grade transcript for Harvard yet. Um, so despite the fact that Edison is criticized, brute force trial and error can be really powerful. 